Good morning, everyone. A blessed day. Indeed, this day is a day of, uh, full of blessings from the Lord. And I'm sure that uh, we will be blessed all the more if we are ready to receive the Word of God this morning. I hope na nagpray tayo kanina no? that uh, the Lord will speak to us uh, through the message. Especially that uh, last week we have started a new series on the book of 2 Timothy. And I hope that we can now appreciate our role uh, in passing on the faith to the next generation. So ito po yung ating pong series, ano? Uh, pass it on. We have that responsibility from the Lord na ibahagi or ishare, ipasa po ang mabuting balita, the gospel uh, to other people, especially to the next uh, generation. And let me begin by asking you a question. As uh, I flash on the screen, uh, think about this. Uh, if you will be given a job that will endanger your life, people will hate you. Friends will abandon you. You will be imprisoned for it. And without regular compensation, will you accept it? To be honest, I think I will not accept this very difficult job. Uh, you will sacrifice your life for this. But do you know that there is a biblical character who accepted this uh, job that was given to him by the Lord Jesus Christ? So I'm referring to the Apostle Paul. Why did he receive, uh, why did he accept this uh, very difficult job? Sa tingin niyo po. Tignan natin po uh, sa 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 11. The gospel for which I was appointed a preacher, apostle, and a teacher. So he recognized here that it is the Lord who called him, who appointed him to the ministry as a preacher, as a messenger, as an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a consequence, he said in verse, uh, verse 11, which is why I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed. I, I think verse 12 po ito, no? Uh, correction po. Which is why I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me. So you can see here that the consequence of Paul uh, taking this responsibility is that he suffered uh, from persecutions. But sabi niya, hindi siya nahiya, no? I am not ashamed. Now, the question here that we want to ask is, why did Paul accept this very difficult job? Why was he willing to sacrifice his own life for it? Napasubo ba siya rito? Sabay nagkamali? Or there is a conviction. He has the conviction from the Lord that he was able to uh, sacrifice his own life for the ministry of the gospel. And so join me today in answering that question. And uh, the title of our message this morning is this, Entrusted with the Gospel. So this is found from verse 8 to 14 of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Now I want you to understand, mga kapatid, ano, na, uh, the gospel has been entrusted to the apostles and has been passed on to generation to generations. And Paul having completed yung pong ministry niya from the Lord he, uh, during the near, uh, near his death, ano, bago po siya mamatay, he passed on the baton, the ministry, to his protege, no other than his spiritual son, Timothy. And this time, uh, yun, pinapasa niya na po yung pong ministry responsibility uh, to, the, uh, to Timothy. He is inviting him to the gospel work and we can see here some important principles that we need uh, to know and to live out in order for us to, to pass on the faith to the next uh, generation. So uh, let me begin ver by verse 8. Uh, sabi dito ni Paul, no? Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Now, it started with the word, therefore. When we hear the word, therefore, what does it imply? It means, hindi po tayo nag-uumpisa sa word na therefore. Tama ba? When we use the word, therefore, it, uh, it means that the message is directly connected 
to the first or to the statement before it. So what, what was the statement of the Apostle Paul in verses 1 to 7? He actually encouraged Timothy, his spiritual son, who, who is probably disheartened by the problems they are encountering in the ministry during that time kung saan there was a severe persecution uh, done by the entire Roman Empire against uh, Christianity. And so after Paul gave encouragement sa verse 1 to 7, do you remember our message last week? Uh, what did Paul remind Timothy in order for him to rekindle the gift of God? He reminded him of three things that he has. First, his sincere faith. Second, his sure calling. And third, his uh, source of power. These are the things that Paul reminded Timothy uh, to encourage him to rekindle the gift of God which is in him. And now after Paul, after Paul gave encouragement to his son, Timothy, he now gives specific instructions as to what he needs to do now. Since ito yung nangyayari sa atin ngayon, this is our situation, what should we do now? Should we hide in fear because of the persecution? No way, according to the Apostle Paul. We need to progress the gospel. There is a work to do. And that's why he, he gave the apostle, uh, he gave Timothy the command. Actually, this uh, passage or this portion of the scriptures has three imperatives or utos, that long commands from the apostle Paul. One, we can see in verse 8, and then verse two, uh, 13, tsaka po verse 14. Now, yung iba pong mga, mga passages or verses, verses 9 to 11 are the background Dun po sa first command. Okay? So what is the first command in verse 8? Uh, it's, it, when, when we read the passage, uh, yung ESV, it seems that there is two command here. But actually in verse 8, there, there is just one command. This is just part of one command. Do not be ashamed, but share in suffering for the gospel. So yung, share, uh, yung do not be ashamed is just part of the major imperative which is to share in suffering for the gospel. Paul is suffering for the gospel, and he is inviting Timothy to join him in the gospel work. And the instructions, particular instructions Paul gave him is, do not be ashamed. Why? Why did he command Timothy not, not to be ashamed? Because that is the natural tendency of people when we experience oppositions, persecution, Ang tendency natin ay mahiya at magtago ano at wag ipahayag ang mabuting balita. But for Paul sabi niya, do not be ashamed because I am not ashamed of the gospel. He said in Romans chapter 1 verse 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for salvation to those who believe uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so ang sabi niya kay Paul, uh, kay, kay Timothy, do not be ashamed. This is not just probably the attitude of Timothy during this time, but minsan tayo, nararamdaman din natin yun, no? that we, we are ashamed sometimes of sharing the gospel to other people. Naranasan yun ba yun? Na kayo matakot, mahiya uh, to share the gospel with other people. And during this time, it would cause him his life. Even the companions, ministry companions of the Apostle Paul, according to him in this book, that everyone has deserted him. Nobody is with him. He is alone. And that's why he was writing to Timothy, actually, during this time, he was alone. No ministry companions. Even the closest companions, Demas, and all others, according to chapter 1, all other people in Asia, my ministry companions, they all deserted me. I am abandoned. I am alone, according to the Apostle Paul. And now, why are they, why did they desert the Apostle Paul? It's because of being ashamed. To be associated with the Apostle Paul is a serious problem during this time. That is a challenge, persecution of the church uh, during this time. And, so, and that's why, ang ano pong command ni Paul sa kanya, share in suffering for the gospel. Because in the gospel, as we, as we share the gospel, there is opposition. Yun po yung reason why there is suffering, why we suffer afflictions. In fact, Paul mentioned that in the 
Thessalonian believers, second, uh, First Thessalonians chapter two, Paul mentioned that we have to suffer afflictions as we progress the ministry of the gospel. That is the consequence of sharing the gospel. People, some people will oppose us, will oppose the message that uh, we are uh, giving them. Pero ang challenge po dito is to share in the suffering for the gospel. Why? Uh, how or in, in what manner uh, can he share the suffering for the gospel? Ayan, uh, makita po natin po dyan sa verse po na yan. So the first uh, thing, uh, first principle that we can learn from this is that people entrusted with the gospel should not be deterred or stopped by persecutions. Hindi po dapat tumigil ang pagpapahayag na mabuting balita. Dahil lamang sa mga opposition. Misa natatakot tayo, no? we, we think na, naku, wag na lang natin ituloy kasi people might persecute us. We might feel uh, ashamed of the gospel. But for Paul, according to him, hindi dapat matigil ang gawain po ng pagmimisyon. Suffering is part of the gospel ministry. Kasama po yun, bahagi po as we... Uh, Hindi lang po suffering ng uh, physically, but in nga po yung opposition po ng mga tao. Now, we can see here the reasons why Paul mentioned here kung bakit, po, uh, kung bakit hindi dapat po matigil ang gawain po ng pagmimisyon. First, makita natin dito the manner by which uh, the, uh, we can share in the suffering of the gospel, for the gospel. Ang sabi dito ni Paul, by the power of God. We are not alone in this difficult job. We have the empowerment available from the Lord. Jesus himself mentioned that when before he left his disciples in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 he said to them that when the Holy Spirit comes to you you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. So we are not alone the empowerment of the Lord is available for those who follow the mandate of the Lord Jesus to share the gospel to other people. And so this uh, verse 9 to 11, or verse 9 to 12, tells us the reason why there is an urgency to pass on the gospel to other people. Two reasons that we can see here from the Apostle Paul. First is that it is because the gospel is a blessing from the Lord. And second reason is that it is a trust ipinagtiwala po sa atin. So let's see first yung pong blessing ng gospel as we read in verse 9. God who saved us and called us to a holy calling, not because of our works, but because of His own purpose and grace which He gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began. Paul now uh, tells Timothy yung bigat nung mabuting balita na ating daladala. This is not an ordinary message. This is so important because the, the gospel is the means by which God saves people from death. Ito yung paraan para ang isang tao po ay maligtas. Pakilala niya po ang Panginoong Heso Kristo sa pamamagitan po ng mabuting balita. Kaya po sabi ni Pablo, huwag mo itong ikahiya ang testimony, ang pagpapahayag patungkol sa mabuting balita. Because in the gospel, we are saved. Ano po yung salvation dito? Not, not because of works, according to the Apostle Paul. Hindi dahil sa gawa natin na tayo po ay maliligtas. But because of His grace sa biyaya ng Diyos. And purpose. Before the ages began, sabi dito, pinlano na po ng Diyos ang ating pong kaligtasan. And as, according to verse 10, and which now has been manifested through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So this is a message. The gospel is the message about our Savior, Jesus Christ. And what did Jesus Christ do? He abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Now, I personally like the words that were mentioned here, immortal life. How many of you want immortal life? Ang dami po siguro. Yung mga... Walang tumas... Naalala ko, naalala ko yung Marvel, eh, no? para mga immortal life, si Thanos, ano, mga ganun. But immortal life, this is the message. 
about eternal life. The gospel is a message about eternal life. Jesus abolished death. And death is a universal problem. It is a problem from the time of Adam up to this generation. People die. And that's the reason why we all need the gospel because everyone, every person in this world will die. That is the urgency. And Jesus, he abolished death. The very problem of humanity. Tayo po ay mamamatay. Pero hindi po matatapos doon, no? We can receive eternal life from the Lord. There is urgency. It is only this is the means by which people will be saved from sin and death. Yung pong mabuting balita. I want to highlight the word through the gospel. Through the gospel. It is through the preaching of the gospel, the message. Yung pong good news, ebanghelyo. Yan po ang pinapahayag po natin sa tao. This is the only means. Wala na pong iba. That people will come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. That they will encounter or experience Christ personally for their salvation by believing in Him. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. By faith in Christ, tayo po ay maligtas. That is our salvation. It is by the grace of God. So this is a, a blessing. Do you agree? The gospel is a blessing from the Lord. Through the gospel, the message of, of salvation is revealed para po sa ating pong lahat. Hindi na po tayo lalayo pa sa lahat po ng lugar kung saan tayo pumupunta. Death is a reality. We live in time where people are so exposed to death. Pandemic, daming death. War, daming death. Everyday crimes, at kung ano-ano pa, we see death. People need the gospel. That's the first reason why there is an urgency to pass on the gospel to other people. This is a blessing. Kapag nakatanggap ka ng blessing, ano pong gusto natin? Share po natin sa iba. So, aside from being a blessing, the gospel is also, is also a trust. According to the Apostle Paul, hindi lang ito nagbibigay ng pagpapala ng kaligtasan, but it is also a trust as we see in verses 11 to 12. Sabi ni Paul, for which, the gospel for which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and teacher. So he recognizes that there is a responsibility given to him by God in view of the gospel. And he is of course, not all are apostles, not all are uh, preachers and, and uh, teachers. But do you agree, lahat tayo pinasahan ng mabuting balita? Ano? And for Paul, this is his specific ministry. I was appointed as an apostle of Jesus Christ, a messenger of the gospel. And because of that, according to him, verse 12, this is the, the consequence of that uh, ministry. Sabi niya sa verse 12, which is why I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed. Sounds familiar? Suffer, saka ashamed. Is, isn't that the command of Paul to Timothy? Do not be ashamed, share in suffering. I am not ashamed, and I am suffering because of the gospel, because this is a trust. God has entrusted the gospel to me, and now I am entrusting the, uh, this gospel to you. So for Paul, this is a life. Hindi lang po ito theory. But passing on the gospel to other people requires a lot of sacrifices. It is a trust. Pinagtiwala po ng Panginoon po sa kanila. At pinagtiwala rin po sa atin. Now in the succeeding verse, makita po natin dyan, o succeeding uh, part of that, yung basis ni Paul, why he is not ashamed, and why he is willing to suffer for the gospel. This is his reason. For I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what has been entrusted to me. Now you notice the words, I, yung word na I know, ano? I know. Knowledge of Christ. It's not a th theoretical knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But it is a personal knowledge of Jesus. I know him. And I believe in him. So it is his knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and his faith in the Lord Jesus Christ that fueled that passion to pass on the gospel to other people. I am convinced 
of the gospel message according to the Apostle Paul? Are you convinced of the message of the gospel? Do you agree or are you fully persuaded by the message of the gospel? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Because the depth of our knowledge of Jesus Christ and our faith in Him would cause us to be willing to sacrifice for the gospel. Again, the gospel is both a blessing and a trust. That is the main lesson that I want to uh, share with you ngayon pong umaga. The gospel is not just, does not just give blessings. Of course, we all want blessings. Lagi tayo doon sa blessing yan. Pag, pero pag trust, pag responsibility ng involved, Lord, pwede yung blessing na lang, no? yung tanggapin ko. We tend to parang refuse accepting responsibility because in Christianity, we think that everything is just taking, taking, taking from the Lord. But those who take the, the blessing of the gospel also has the responsibility to share it with other people. That is the truth. We are indebted to God because of the salvation that we receive from the Lord. And Paul knew that. Hindi dapat itigil ang pagbabahagi ng Ebanghelyo. Sapagkat ako ay iniligtas ng Panginoon, I am convinced of the message of the gospel. Again, the gospel is both a blessing and a trust. And that's why I want to ask you some reflection questions. On the scale of 1 to 10, how passionate are you in passing on the faith to the next generation? Do you strive to do it? Is it your priority in your life? Pass it on to others. And secondly, are you willing to make sacrifices for the advancement of the gospel? Or should I ask you, what sacrifices is God asking you to do for the, full, for the fulfillment of the gospel, for the advancement of the gospel in your family, in your workplace, in your community? God wants you to bear the message of the gospel. So number two, makita natin dito is that people entrusted with the gospel should not depart from correct teaching. Kanina, do not, we should not be deterred by persecution. Today, at uh, this time, we, we should not depart from correct teaching. Meaning, we need to follow the exact message that was passed on to us. Kailangan accurate po. No? Sabi ni Paul in verse 13, Follow the pattern of the sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. What is the command here? To follow the pattern. Yung pattern means example or standard. Pattern. Diba? We, followed, uh, we need to follow the pattern of what? Of sound words. What is sound words here? Hindi po yan tunog lang, ano yung sound. It's not, it's not tunog. But when we hear the word sound words or sound teaching, it means correct doctrine or correct teaching. It is a responsibility to verify what we receive. And we verify that through the scriptures. Kinakailangan sundan natin yung pattern of, according to Apostle Paul, what you heard from me. That means the gospel or the sound teaching that Paul passed on to them. So napaka-importante po na makapatad yung pong pattern or yung yung standard. Alam niyo po ba na ang Jollibee Chicken Joy? Na, mahilig po kayo sa Jollibee. Do you like Jollibee Chicken Joy? Pag bumili po kayo ng Jollibee Chicken Joy here in Santa Rosa, Robinson Santa Rosa, same taste dun po sa Jollibee Tagaytay. Tatry niyo na po, compare niyo po, pareho. When you go to Baguio, same din po, no? Same. Pareho yung lasa, same, same taste. And you go to Visayas and Mindanao, same. Go to the other countries, same things. Why is it that pare-pareho, isa na ba nagluluto nun? Why is it? Because of the standard, the pattern that is followed closely, very accurate, yung pong pattern na pinafollow, the standard. And this is exactly what Paul says to Timothy. Follow the pattern. Huwag kang magde-depart. Huwag kang lalayo. Do not deviate from the correct teaching that you received from me. 
And how can you do that? You need to verify it through the scriptures. I will die, but the word of God will continue. It is not bound. You need to be rooted sa salita ng Panginoon. Some people say, Ay, it's not important to be more, very accurate in the message as long as we are reaching out to many people. Marami naman tayong naaabot eh. Okay na yun, kahit di na natin masyadong aralin pa yan or i-explore pa or intindihin mabuti. Basta ipasa mo na lang. Ganun po ba yan? The problem with that statement is that there is a huge crowd that, follow, that can follow a false teaching. Then no po mangyayari kapag ka po mali ang pinafollow, then the destination will be different from what is stated in the Bible. And so we need to be very serious about verifying the truth that we receive sa salita ng Diyos. And that's why the Apostle Paul commanded Timothy in the next chapter, chapter 2, verse 15. Ang sabi niya, you need to study or you need to make all effort. Sabi sa ESV, do your best. Pagbutihin mo. Ano? To present yourself to God as one approved a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of God. Sabi sa, ang ganda nung uh, King James Version, eh, no? sabi doon, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman who needs not to be ashamed, carefully dividing the word of truth. We need to study, aralin, i-verify. Kaya uso po ang fake news ngayon, Many people do not verify what they receive. We need to verify the news or any teachings that we receive. And how can we verify that? We have the standard of teaching, the scriptures. It is the scriptures na nagtuturo po sa atin ng tamang katuroan. This is our standard. Not even our opinion, uh, hindi, hindi po yun ang pinakamahalaga. Hindi yun ang mahalaga. But what is written from the scriptures, and that's why we should not deviate or depart from the teachings of the Bible. It is our responsibility, mga kapatid, to follow the pattern. The pattern was given to us, but then binagit niya po dyan yung word na, sige po, what you have heard from me. Follow what you have, the pattern, the sound teaching that you have heard from me. Now, in our case, it's difficult. To, to be sure of what Paul heard, uh, Timothy heard from Paul, naranasan nyo na yung pass the word. You heard the word. You pass it to other. It's difficult to make sure that on the third generation, same words. Pag naipasa po, na? And that's why, ito po ang kagandahan naman dyan. They are so meticulous, ang mga apostles po natin. They compiled, even the generations after the apostles, they compiled the apostles' writings. And they have kept yung pong accuracy. They have preserved the accuracy of the scriptures to be passed on to the next generation. And that is to preserve yung pong accuracy po nan. Yung kaya po, they compiled the teachings of the apostles. What you have heard from me, you need to pass it on to others. And that's why the scriptures, mga kapatid, has stood the test of time from generation to generation. Ang dami na po nagsikap na it disprove ang Biblia, but still... Nobody succeeds in disproving the Bible, the message that was transferred to us by the Apostle. So follow the pattern of sound words. And how are we able to do that, mga kapatid? We need to be rooted in the Scriptures. I, I realize that discernment, our discernment increases kapag po lumalalim ang pagkakilala natin sa salita ng Diyos yung sound words, sound doctrines. The more rooted we are in the scriptures, the more we will be able to know the teachings kung ito ba ay mali o tama. Tama ba? Parang sabi sa scriptures, ah, sabi sa Bible, kapag ka daw ang isang uh, tao ay nadadala ng maling katuruan, para siyang bata na toss and fro by the winds of any doctrine or false doctrines. But the more we grow in the word of God, mas nalalaman mo yung tama o mali. And so this is a challenge for all of us. Follow the pattern of sound words means be rooted in the scriptures. Know your Bible, mga kapatid. This is a re our responsibility. And of course, the parents, this is a responsibility of parents to, 
to uh, help their children to follow the, the correct teaching from the scriptures. And how are we able to do that? First, we should follow the teachings, be rooted in the word of God. Ang dami pong mga maling katuroan na nagkalat po ngayon, everywhere. Hindi talalayo pa, ano? Pilipinas lang po, ang dami na pong mga false teachers. When you open your Facebook, you see many uh, video clips about teachings of false teachers. And how, as parents, will you able to guard your children from the false teachings? Paano po mga kapatid? You need to arm them with the weapon of God's word. God's word to combat all other false, all false teachings. Yun po, yung, yun po yung way para matulungan natin ang mga kapatiran, ang family natin. Your, the people you are discipling, you want them to, uh, na hindi sila ma, ma, uh, maniwala, mapaniwala ng mga maling katuruan. Our responsibility is to arm them. Bigyan mo ng armas ang anak mo, ang disciple mo, yung salita ng Diyos. Help them to be rooted in the word of God. And here in the G7 Santa Rosa, that, that is what we are doing here. We want to be rooted in the Word of God. We have a lot of trainings. Siguro, siguro po itong mga trainings po na ito ay di naman po kulang sa atin. Napakarami po na pwede po nating atinan. In fact, uh, during the Sunday afternoon, meron pong Ruth Camp ang ating mga kalalakihan. But pati yung mga asawa nila nagjo-join na rin, no? But you know that after the Ruth camp, we have other camps. Genesis camps, Abraham camp, ano pa, Joseph camp, New Testament, etc. Ang dami po nating pwedeng matutunan at ituro sa ating pong mga anak. So the, the responsibility here, mga kapatid, is tayo po, kailangan nating magpalalim sa salita ng Diyos to, in order to follow the sound words uh, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, the gospel is both a blessing and a trust. Number three principle that we can learn from this passage is people entrusted with the gospel should defend it from false teaching or from falsehood. Hindi lang basta tayo mag-follow sa word of God o sa katuruan, tamang katuruan, but it's also a responsibility of the people entrusted with the gospel to guard it. Sabi ni Paul sa verse 14, By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Guard. Kasama po pala yun sa job description ni, Paul, ah, ni Timothy na binigay ni Paul. Now that uh, uh, you are entrusted with the gospel, your responsibility is to defend or to guard it. Hindi yung palaway ka, nalagi ka nakikipag-debate, nakikipag-away ko kanina-kanino. That's not how you defend the gospel. But you, you, you keep it do not allow any false teaching to infiltrate or dumihan yung authentic message of the gospel. Because the gospel itself is enough for us para maligtas, mga kapatid. Enough. Wala pong kailangan idagdag po dyan. Hindi mo kailangan uh, baguhin. Minsan, natanin natin baguhin eh. No? Para mas mukha siyang presentable. Hindi na natin na... Uh, may, mga part, may mga part na tinatry natin, gusto natin mas maging kaaya-aya sa mga tao. But our responsibility is to guard it, to defend it from any falsehood. I want the word that was used by the Apostle Paul here, the word deposit. What does it mean, yung pong word na deposit? Yung word po na deposit na ginamit dyan actually carries the word that we, as we understand it today. Have you deposited money to the bank? Ayan. Yung word po niyan, deposit, came from the word parateke. I'm not sure about the pronunciation, but it actually conveys the message of something that is entrusted to one's care. Entrusted to one's care. That's parateke or deposit. And Paul said, the gospel has been deposited to you. You were given the deposit. And so, kung tinanggap mo yan, what is the responsibility of the people who receive the deposit? Pag nagbigay ka sa banko ng pera mo, what is their responsibility? It's their responsibility to secure it from online scammers, etc. 
It's their responsibility because you have entrusted to them your resources. Same with the gospel that has been entrusted to our care. We need to guard it, the purity of the gospel. We need to defend it from false teachers. During the time of the Apostle Paul, false teachers have infiltrated the church. Nakapasok po sila. And Paul wanted Timothy to guard the deposit. Yan po yung utos niya po dyan, ano? Guard the good deposit entrusted to you. This word, uh, same word, ginamit yan sa verse 12. Ano? For I know whom I have believed and I'm convinced that he is able to guard until that day what has been entrusted to me or deposit. Sabi sa verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 2, this is the same, uh, yung com- command ni Paul sa chapter 2 in continuation dito sa message niya na ito. Ano? Ito yung command niya kay Paul, ah, kay Timothy. What you have heard from me, yung in-entrust sa akin ng Panginoon, binigay ko sa iyo. What you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust, paritetemi, uh, that's verb, the verb form of deposit. Deposit it to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. This is a command of Paul. Yung deposito na nasa iyo, ay alag, pangalaga mo yan, guard it, and pass it on carefully. Very carefully to other people. Same words sa chapter 6 verse 20 ng 1 Timothy. Ito yung unang letter ni Paul kay Timothy. Binanggit niya na po yung word po na yan. Ano? O Timothy, guard the deposit. Para tiki, entrusted to you Avoid the irreverent babble and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. Now, your knowledge dito does not mean biblical knowledge. This is gnosis. It actually is uh, parang false teaching of during the time of the Apostle Paul. In fact, uh, mas lumala po yung uh, gnosis or gnosticism after the Apostles. Pero during their time, mayroong so-called knowledge na binabanggit ng mga false teachers. And they are departing from the truth of the Word of God. They, ha- they are there. And sabi ni Paul, avoid them. Do not associate with them. Hindi ibig sabihin yun na pag nakita mo sila, lalayo ka. Ay, ayoko makita to. But it means, avoid them means, do not allow yung, yung maling katuroan na ma-infect ang tamang katuroan, ang tamang, ang mabuting balita. You have to guard it. Why? This is the reason. For by professing it, some have swerved from the faith. Some have swerved from the faith. Ang daming na iligaw sa maling katuroan itong mga tao po na ito. In fact, yung word po na swerved, nag-swerve na po kayo? Nahuli kayo swerve? You, nagbago ka ng line eh, no? nag-swerve sa faith eh. In fact, that is one of the key words of the, the book of 1 Timothy. Try to read that. I highlighted that, yung word na swerve in the faith or swayed from the faith. Lumayo sila sa katotohanan, sa katuroan ng Kristiyano. Uh, they were in the church, but they were, uh, kumbaga, they, they swerved from the faith. Napasukan po sila ng maling katuruan. And that's why, the challenge ng Apostle Pablo kay Timothy, guard the good deposit. Guard the gospel. Because any distortion of the, of the truth will result to a huge problem Hindi lang sa mga nakikinig. To all the people who will receive false message or, me, or yung message ng, na nabahiran po ng maling katuruan. So it is our responsibility. Parents, it's our responsibility to protect your children, to arm them with the weapon of God's word to guard the purity of the gospel in your family. And in the church, it's the responsibility of leaders, elders, pastors to correct the teachings, to be correct in the teaching and i-correct ang mga ta- amaling katuroan na nag, uh, kumakalat po nga sa panahon po natin ngayon. I remember I, I, when, uh, in the first church that I, where I served, there was a woman, deacon or deaconess, who uh, during the time she was not attending church for almost three to four months, so I was wondering, why is she not uh, attending? So I tried to visit her. And when I saw her, the hair, long hair, ang haba na po ng kanyang buhok, hindi na po siya napapagupit. I used to see her, may silang po ang kanyang buhok. And I learned from her that she is, that the reason why she is no longer attending church is because 
na tutok na siya doon sa TV niya. Meron pong uh, TV program, yung isang false teachers who teaches that, the, that salvation is by works. By works. And she was hooked by this program, TV program. And what is astonishing about this program is that 24-7 po yan ang palabas po na yan. No? Kaya any time of the day, you open your TV, you will see that. She was hooked by that. In fact, she was baptized by the local church of that TV program. So I was disheartened. I was saddened by, by that news. And what I did was every week I tried to go to, that, to their house to explain to her the gospel, salvation in Christ alone. By faith in Christ. I, I, I mentioned, I, we, we studied it very carefully. And I tried inviting her again, please come with me in the seminary. I am teaching in the seminary. Please just sit down and I want you to, to uh, listen to the teachings. After a few weeks, I'm so glad that she said, she told the, that local uh, religious group na umalis na po siya doon, ano, and she continued serving the Lord, faithfully serving the Lord until she died uh, just a few years ago. She died, but she was able to, to bring her, some of her children to the Lord during the course of time. What, why am I telling you this, mga kapatid? This is very crucial. Guard the deposit. Guard the purity of the gospel. It is our responsibility to verify the gospel personally, to verify the word of God from the scriptures, and it's also a responsibility to guard the people around us na hindi po sila madaya po ng mga maling katuruan. Again, our message is the gospel is both a blessing and a trust. As a summary, this is our message. Do not be deterred by persecutions. Do not depart from correct teaching. And we should defend it from falsehood. As a commitment to the Word of God, I would like to invite you to pray with me to make a renewed commitment to the Lord. This is a very serious thing because ang nakasalalay po dito, mga kapatid, what is at stake here is our eternal life. The, the life of other people, people around us. They are also souls just like us. And if they do not meet the Lord Jesus Christ, they will perish according to the scriptures. These souls, precious souls, will perish apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. And the only way for them to know, to get to come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ is by is through the gospel that is entrusted to you and me. And so the challenge is to make a renewed commitment to the Lord. I will I am committing to pass on the faith. I want to know you deeper. I want to grow to be rooted in the in my knowledge of the scriptures and to guard the authentic gospel from false teachings. Tayo po yung manalangin. Panginoon, maraming pong salamat. You see parents that are here, young people who are here, Lord, and there is a struggle, Lord, to be ashamed of the gospel. At times, Lord, we feel ashamed. Forgive us, Lord. Dahil minsan natatakot kami, but sometimes, Lord, we forget that the gospel is a blessing that we have received from you. And also a responsibility, a trust, a trust deposited to us, Lord. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon. In our fallen human nature, we tend, Lord, to escape from the sacrifices uh, of the gospel, Lord. But now that we have understood it through the scriptures, we have re- we've been reminded, Lord, of, of the seriousness, of the urgency of the gospel. Lord, may you refuel our passion to win souls for the Lord. Bless this church. Continue to, to deploy us. Continue to commission us para maibahagi po namin ang mga salita mo. Ang sound teachings from the scriptures. 
Salamat po ama. We pray for each parents, for each parent that that is here, Panginoon. We pray for your blessings sa kanila. Help them, Lord, to study the word of God in their family together. To be rooted, Lord, in the scriptures so that they will be able to guard their families from false teachings. Help them arm their children with the weapon of scriptures, which is the only way to combat false teachings. Lord, bless each one of us. Bless the leadership of this church, O oh God. Continue, Lord, to help us, empower us to defend the purity of the message of the gospel. Salamat po, Panginoon. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen.